What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another exciting episode of Whatever News! The only news source that provides anything and everything anime and manga related. And we don't bore you. We get into it. Let's do it. For no matter how you know, get it done. No Okay, people, welcome back to another episode. In case you don't know, 65% of people watching this show right now, this very clip, aren't subscribed, and it helps the channel immensely, helps us to continue to grow, thrive, and all of that good stuff if you would simply hit subscribe and hit the bell to get all notifications over here on YouTube. We do Forever News Monday through Friday, and then Saturday and Sunday you get manga reviews and all sorts of other really awesome stuff. And also wanted to quickly plug again, in case you don't know, for people that want the long-form version of for never news every saturday we upload the full-on for never news episode of the week with everything we talked about and then some over on this other channel that you can check out and subscribe if you'd like also on all podcast streaming services as well so yeah a bunch of different ways to get your for never news and with all that being said let's jump straight into these stories baby okay people and first story on the docket now there's some very big series out there that may not be necessarily in weekly shonen jump but they're still massive Massively popular that's been going on for several years now and oftentimes I always think to myself like so what's going on with that series like it's still running like I, I love some of these series to be honest with you but I just get lost with everything else and I'm like oh damn well maybe when it ends I'll marathon it or if it gets another anime or something like that I'll jump into it but yeah there's a few series that ultimately have been going on for so long and you question sometimes like it's still not over. Well, apparently one of those big name titles has confirmed that it's entering the climax. In case you haven't heard of this series, I'd be shocked because it was very big, especially when the anime was running. Seraph of the End, aka Owadi no Seraph, has uh, apparently announced that it is reaching its climax. Let's read so we can get all the details on what's going on. But yeah, it looks like a big one is um coasting away. Seraph of the End manga heads towards climax. And the Author comments in the 26th compiled book volume of Takaya Kagami, Yamato Yamamoto, and Daisuke Furuya's Seraph of the End Vampire Reign, aka Owari no Seraph manga, Kagami revealed on Friday that the manga is headed towards its climax. The manga's 27th volume will ship in June, and of course Kagami, Yamamoto, and storyboard artist Furuya launched the original Seraph of the End Vampire Reign manga in Shueisha's Jump Square back in 2012. So let's just put that into perspective for a second. They dropped it in 2012 meaning that this year makes 10 years since Seraph of the End began and that is freaking insane and yeah, probably might be a good time to wrap things up again. I'm not sure. I haven't been caught up with Seraph of the End of Manga. I've never been caught up. I was really with the anime. I love the anime. Oh my god, that OST is so good. The opening. Oh, scapegoat the ending. Come and break it down for me. Oh my god. And yeah, like again, it's one of those monthly series that they're popular enough that a lot of people know them. They had very big and excellent anime and all that jazz. But again, because of their release schedule, you don't really, you know, get them often. So you kind of just put them in the back of your mind but yeah 10 years later it looks like Seraph of the End is heading towards its climax which means that it could still last for a bit like I always got a reference that there was series back in the day and even till this day that they announced yo we're going into our climax and then they'll still run for another year or two because the climax just has so much story to it or things like that or it could be five chapters from now like there's also a bunch of cases of that as well like hey we're headed towards the climax and then all of a sudden a month later hey we're, we're, we're ending it's the final chapter so you don't really know other than you know that there is an end in sight for them and it could be very soon it could be a little bit of a ways off but nevertheless the end is coming for Seraph of the End and again I, I haven't been caught up so I can't really say like oh they've been doing things but ultimately from what I remember I really enjoyed Seraph of the End season 1 and 2 of the anime and I know that the manga kept going and I was like what happened to getting a season 3 I'm imagining maybe season 2 didn't perform as well as they would have liked because we never got a season 3 and yeah I really like Seraph of the End and they had a lot of really awesome stuff. And again, I can't stress the OST was so freaking godlike. But um, yeah, who knows? Maybe with this announcement, they'll finally give us like a season three and four. One big wrap up the finale of like maybe, I don't know, 48 episodes or some shit. Which that's probably uh, wishful thinking, wishful dreaming. Uh, but yeah, Seraph of the End manga reaching its climax. Another big one is Biting the Dust. 
insane and again I, I don't feel like oh my god it's sad because it's 10 years deep now it's it's kind of crazy like some of the big guns right now even in weekly shonen jump haven't even made it towards that 10 year mark so congrats to Seraph making it this long and yeah hopefully it has a solid conclusion okay people next up another big juggernaut of an announcement a lot of people were spamming me because I want to say this was announced on like Friday if I'm not mistaken people were hitting me up left and right saying yo dog uh you gotta cover this fam and I was like well, you know, for never news is Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. EST. We'll, we'll we'll talk about it then. But it has been announced and confirmed after speculation of wait, well, you know, what, what's happening, what's going on, and of course after a very big tragedy of I want to say it was either one of the directors, I believe it was the director had passed away. So it was a lot of uncertainty if this one was going to get another season, simply because there was you know a little bit of a, a mist in between everything. We're like yo, we we don't know what's happening. But it's been confirmed that Eden's zero is indeed getting its second season of the anime and the way the the first season ended to be honest with you it ended on a cliffhanger and it kind of felt like they really wanted to do that second season regardless because yeah it's a netflix exclusive anime and right now netflix is building its you know repertoire so to speak in terms of like on the anime side of things and as much as they can get like you know involved in stuff they could keep on building their library so yeah they're probably gonna want more of that eden zero especially because it made a, a decent amount of noise also i I've heard a lot of good things that the anime covered some really awesome stuff but that the next parts after the anime is where it just keeps getting better and better so i'm expecting that eden zero season two is going to just blow minds based on what everybody keeps on telling me and the fact that i do need to catch up with the manga even though i ain't gonna lie part of me is tempted like I, I could stay anime only and really enjoy the experience like I have been, but uh, I don't know. Either way, Eden Zero Season 2 anime confirmed. So if you was a little bit skeptical, you was like mm, questioning, no, it's definitely happening. I mean, Hiro Mashima was going to make sure it happens. Like Hiro Mashima, the things he's done in the past, that was definitely like, yo, he, he wants his anime to continue. Like I remember with Fairy Tale, uh, one of the times, because Fairy Tale went off air a couple different times, but one of the times that it went off air, I remember it was like back to back every other week he was dropping two chapters of fairy tale which was probably to say hey yo there's plenty of content you can restart the anime i know you got caught up with the manga and stuff but look and that's something that you can do nothing but salute hiro mashima and he's probably giving it his all with eden zero right now and i'm guessing that if eden zero is going to blow up into you know mainstream stardom and success and all that jazz it's probably going to happen if it is going to happen with season two and beyond based on again what everybody keeps telling me of how dark and crazy and the insanity that goes down with Eden Zero that this is not the Hiro Mashima you know from fairy tales so that's comforting to hear and I, I like season one of Eden Zero to be honest with you so if it gets better than that let's go baby season two confirmed Eden Zero I'm hype moving forward Jujutsu Kaisen manga fans we are um unfortunately gonna be a little down bad for a week because according to the unofficial weekly shonen jump twitter it says Jujutsu Kaisen will be on break next week in weekly shonen jump issue number 11 however the series will resume in issue 12 as scheduled which is and par for the course of what they constantly have been doing now thankfully even though it's a newer thing it's still nevertheless happening because yo first of all gege has been dropping some really awesome and solid stuff some people would argue jujutsu kaisen's the best thing in weekly shonen jump in general but nevertheless there's been some awesome chapters i've been having a blast with it and yeah get some rest that's what i always say whether it be horikoshi whether it be tabata of course oda all of these mangaka get your rest i am never upset in fact i almost feel like to a certain degree if you're getting mad at your mangaka taking like a week off here and there that kind of feels for me personally i would feel shall i say selfish like yo dog they, they they need this right now like there's a little bit of a difference like and i could totally sympathize and empathize and sometimes i fall down that rabbit hole as well when it comes to the yoshihiro tagashi hunter hunter situation like dog literally right here next to me there's like 30 volumes of hunter hunter is it 30 or more i've currently got 33 volumes of hunter hunter i'm probably behind by like i don't know five volumes or something like that but i've got 33 volumes of hunter hunter next to me it sucks that more than likely because of yoshihiro tagashi's constant hiatuses in fact he's on his long longest one yet what is it two three years or some shit like that that'll probably end up being an incomplete series and yeah it won't have a conclusive ending which really sucks i really hope that that's not the case but at this point it's damn near all hope is lost you know what i'm saying so again i can't get mad at an author taking a week or two off when tagashi's taking three years and not saying a peep he's like yo dog y'all have fun jujutsu kaisen manga taking a week off starting next week nah not a big deal get some rest gege moving forward we got plenty three 
terrible announcements that I was just kind of like, yo, dog, it's starting to look almost like a freaking press release, a, a, a promo rollout or some shit like that for an album or something. Because every single week, if you've been following Forever News, at the very least one or two episodes a week of Forever News for the last couple months, I have been telling you guys, hey, so this actor just announced that they got the you know covid this actor saying hey i got covid so it's been damn near every freaking week i have at least in one episode mentioned oh another voice actor came out and said that they have it well now we got three main huge voice actors like i'm not talking about somebody that you know they voiced something back in the night like these are three very prominent voice actors that we're going to go through that all have announced that they have COVID. Let's read. For starters, we got voice actor Junya Enoki, who has tested positive. Talent agency Automatic Monkey announced on Tuesday that voice actor Junya Enoki has tested positive. According to the agency, Enoki began feeling discomfort in his throat on Monday morning and also had a fever. He took a PCR test on Monday and the result came back positive on the same day. The company added that Enoki is focusing on recovering under the guidance of healthcare professionals. Enoki stated on his Twitter account that he will take a break from work activities while he recovers. Covers. And the the reason why I'm, you know, putting this out there, because obviously there's plenty of people that are being contracted with it, but uh, he voices in such roles as Yuji Itadori and Jujutsu Kaisen. So essentially, Yuji's voice actor has been diagnosed with COVID. And I mean, he's done a few other roles. He was uh, he was in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. He was in Comey Can't Communicate. He, he was in a few other ones, but you're definitely going to know him from uh, Jujutsu Kaisen as Yuji. So that's one. That's already one. And we're talking about just in this week alone, not to mention all the other weeks that I've been telling you guys, but we got him. Then we got Demon Slayer, a big voice actor from Demon Slayer, the guy that plays Zenitsu. It says here, Demon Slayer Zenitsu VA, Hiroshimono tests positive for COVID for a second time. Because I do remember saying, if I'm not mistaken, I believe I reported the first time he quoted. Now he quoted again. The agency for voice actor Hiroshimono, I'm Enterprise, revealed today that Shimono has once again tested positive after contracting the disease back in July 2021. The agency noted that Shimono was already under self-quarantine after being deemed a close contact for a few days and under went to PCR test due to this, which resulted in a positive result. Shimoto is reportedly feeling fine and is currently receiving treatment under instruction from a local health center. I'm Enterprise again for the situation, vowed again to make every effort to prevent spread of the disease, placing highest priority on the safety of our actors, employees, and everyone involved. Shimono is best known for voicing Zenitsu and Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba, as well as Connie and Attack on Titan, and Dobby in My Hero Academia. Holy shit, I didn't know this man was doing all of that let alone the fact that like yo dog you're goaded if you're doing zenitsu and then you're going all the way to the other side of the spectrum as voicing dobby like i had no idea shout out to this dude hope he gets better but he's saying that he's not feeling any symptoms so that's a good sign um but yeah so yuji zenitsu and the last one on the list we got fairy tales natsu va tetsuya kakihara has contracted covid the twitter account for tetsuya kakihara's voice acting agency zinkro announced today that the voice actor had tested positive. Kakihara is best known for voicing the lead character Natsu Dragneel in the fairy tale franchise as well as Keith Clays in My Next Life as a Villainous All Routes Lead to Doom and Jen Kisaragi in the Blaze Blue video game. Zinkro reported that Kakihara had a low grade fever on January 29th and was administered a PCR test which returned a positive result. Kakihara is currently under medical observation and treatment and will continue to do so for a certain amount of time. And yeah, so so Natsu, Yuji, and Zenitsu's voice actors, or and Dobby, I guess, you know, and Connie from Attack on Titan. Yeah, all three of them. I'm wishing them a speedy recovery. Hopefully it's nothing too major. The symptoms and all that jazz. Well, a few of them they're they're feeling alright, so that's a good sign. But yeah, man, this is this is crazy. I'm I'm reporting this at, at, you know as it happens each and every week. We're getting multiple voice actors coming out with this. I don't know. It feels sometimes like yo dog, what is going on here? Is really wild and strange especially like the big press release about it like i don't know maybe i guess it's just a warning for people to stay safe but yeah it's kind of bonkers but yeah people big voice actors three of them um contracted with covid okay people next up things aren't looking the greatest when it comes to the new series by the creator of tokyo ghoul slash tokyo ghoul re uh his new series chojin x it looks like at the very least in the physical publication they're essentially axing it from being physical and it's going back to just being a digital thing let's read 
Seed. It says Choji Next by Tokyo Ghoul creator Suishida will stop serialization in Weekly Young Jump. The series will continue in Tonari no Young Jump's web service. Please note that the series always was a Tonari no Young Jump original from the start and only started additional publications in the magazine afterwards. Now, I keep it a buck with you. A part of me feels like there's a lot of different variables in there. For starters, like one of the things is probably Sui Ishida is not going to bend to their whim of like, yo dog, that's great that you're doing a weekly magazine. I'm not going to be able to hand these chapters in weekly. In fact, I might take long hiatuses in between. Because notice, as soon as they announced that they were putting some of these chapters in weekly Young Jump, all of a sudden, we've had a little bit of a break in between then and now of getting Choji Next chapters. In fact, since I've made my Choji Next video, we haven't got another Choji Next chapter since then. So it's kind of crazy to me. And the fact that they're doing that also, I just personally feel, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I feel like because of the irregular release schedule and in general, the fact that it's not bubbling up like you would have expected for a Sui Ishida title even though the sales at first they looked a little rocky but the sales aren't bad at all like it actually was doing pretty well I just feel like Shueisha doesn't believe in this one I feel like Shueisha isn't on board with the promo I feel like Shueisha doesn't want to give it the okay because Sui Ishida is not and what I mean by okay is like you know giving it the extra push and the muscle and all that jazz because Sui Ishida doesn't seem to be on board with yeah I'm not dropping chapters weekly like he did that we all know in case you don't that he got really depressed towards the end of Tokyo Ghoul which I can only imagine though you just got to think about it for a second how long he was writing Tokyo Ghoul and Tokyo Ghoul is a very extremely depressing story at times so this man for years upon years is day in and day out writing this really sad story especially he has to hand in these chapters on a weekly basis dude was probably miserable that's probably why he's like <laughs> that, that's all fine and dandy we're just doing the web tonari no jump okay like that's where we're sticking so that's probably why shueisha's like a oh, word okay well we're, we're not gonna do this we're just gonna uh, remove it from weekly young jump and you can do that web thing and yeah i don't know the future of choji next is going to be interesting to see is it going to make it for the long haul and eventually get an anime adaptation is it gonna get canceled like what the fate is for it is up in the air right now now i'm not saying that it's going to get canceled before people say for never world's trying to say it's getting canceled but it's not a good sign at all for them to pull it from their main seinen publication magazine weekly young jump that's a great way to market something if it's not going to be in there it could also be because they're caught up already we're releasing the chapters or it could just be that shueisha is like if you ain't gonna play ball we ain't gonna push the ball and it's that simple which it really would suck because i ain't gonna lie i'm enjoying choji next it's not my favorite per se and i'm not nowhere near gung-ho for it as i was tokyo ghoul but it's still pretty dope so i guess time will tell what happens with this one but don't be surprised and i'm just gonna say this don't be surprised if a year from now we hear oh choji next is getting wrapped up and there's no anime adaptation or anything because this feels like steps backwards from pushing the whole choji next manga in general again i don't know time will tell and like i said it also could just be that they it up and again Suishida is not trying to bust out a chapter a week that's just not on his agenda okay people next up I thought that this was huge and I was kind of shocked to see it because like yo damn it still boggles my mind sometimes that anime has really hit the mainstream so much so that Forbes magazine Forbes itself actually covered some of the recent stuff on Attack on Titan I seen on Twitter they put Eren Yeager plays his trap card on Attack on Titan and they went into an in-depth coverage of some of the latest stuff on attack on titan like hey Aaron yeager plays his trap card on attack on titan last night on attack on titan things got even crazier than usual and i don't want to really go into spoilers but essentially they broke down a lot of what's been going on in the anime recently and it just boggles my mind a lot of people were hitting me like yo dog can you believe this right now attack on titan being covered by forbes that is huge that is absolutely huge for again this medium and i'm just always fascinated like how far is it really gonna go right because we've come a long way from the days of cat's last laughing at you in 2010 for talking about that rubbery pirate named Luffy like yo you into those cartoon eh? we're a long way from there but I still feel like there's so much more potential where it could go like we just started cracking the surface I would still say that anime and manga still isn't nowhere close to the level of like video games like video games is still way out there I I'd say that anime and manga is a lot more sociably acceptable like you would find a whole group of like 10 people rocking out talking about anime and manga and stuff like that but it's still not on the same level as video games now with the purchases and acquisitions that we've been seeing from sony and all of these companies they're gonna keep on pushing it to the mainstream so it's gonna be interesting 10 years from now even seeing okay has it progressed further has it regressed is there a collapse because yeah it's big business now like when sony pays hundreds of millions for something 
big business is ensuing. But yeah, people attack on Titan being covered by Forbes, an in-depth episode breakdown as well. It's kind of crazy, something that I was doing in my room back in 2012, and people were like, oh, he's on the internet breaking down anime episodes. Now Forbes is doing it. Hmm. Kind of makes you really question when people back in the day used to say, like, get a real job. But now Forbes is doing something that I've been jobbing <laughs> for like a decade. But all right. Attack on Titan covered by Forbes. Okay, people. And last story of the episode. This was pretty huge too because this is a classic series. I've seen the anime before. It's like a six episode OVA if I'm not mistaken. They're making a brand new anime for this one. And I believe it's going to be a Netflix exclusive. We're going to get all the details in a second. But Bastard. Bastard, if I'm not mistaken, is a, again a little bit of an older series from Weekly Show and jump uh and it had an anime back in the day like i said i got a copy of it but it never really blew up blew up per se in the west i guess you would say and, and i want to say also the manga because on that tagashi 10 million year hiatus type of stuff although i'm not sure about his health issues so i don't really want to go in on him but nevertheless yeah bastard let's read bastard heavy metal dark fantasy key visual for the series new anime project cast includes kisho taniyama tomori kusunoki hiroki yasumoto and yoko hikasa and i go like that visual dog dark snyder baby says bastard manga gets new netflix anime warner brothers japan announced on thursday that kazushi hagiwara's bastard fantasy action manga is getting a new anime that will debut worldwide on netflix in 2022 the company revealed the anime's cast staff and visual we got a couple of like visuals of the characters again this is kisho taniyama as dark snyder which he still has that classic i guess 90s 80s look that he had from the old Old anime and then we got also Tia Noto Yoko uh, played by Tamori Kusunoki and then we got Hiroki Yasumoto as Gara which why does Gara straight up look like guts from Berserk and why is his name Gara but all right Takaharu Ozaki from Goblin Slayer is directing the anime at Liden Films Yosuke Kuroda who did My Hero Academia Mobile Suit Gundam 00 is in charge of series composition the anime will get a special program online on YouTube and Billy Billy on February 10th at 8 p.m. JST featuring the cast and director. So the series was serialized in 1988 in Weekly Shonen Jump and the series has since had irregular serialization in the magazine and later in Ultra Jump starting in 2001. Shoisha published the manga's 27th compiled book volume in March 2012. Viz Media had released the manga in English but stopped publishing the series with the 19th volume. So yeah people something to get excited about. Bastard is one hell of a trippy ride and Dark Snyder is he's a pretty awesome character. Although with Netflix getting it I'm just curious to see what they're gonna do with it because yo it's crazy netflix just jumping in out of nowhere we're like hey we got a bastard anime like okay we have people that's all the stories we have for today's episode curious what you guys think most important story favorite story anything that caught your interest something that i didn't mention that you wanted me to mention let me know that's all i have for this one though thanks for watching hope you enjoyed i'm for world and as always people have an awesome day and remember the golden rule anime and manga for life, boy! Have an awesome day. Peace in. You guys just watched another episode of... Whatever it is! Have an awesome day. Again, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell. Let's go!